Okay. Uh, I would say Breath of the Wild any percent. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're doing, like, a beginner route, um, is... You could get under an hour in, like, under a week. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, um, if you wanted to do the more, like, non-beginner friendly route, it would, it would be much more difficult to become proficient. Um, uh... But for reference, yeah. the record's like in the 20s minutes, right? Correct. Player five's world record is is like 24 minutes or something in any percent. Wow. Um, but he is and I am gen like he is genuinely goaded. Uh -huh. Built different, perhaps. Yes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start a new game. Sure. Um, so, yeah, he's goaded with the sauce. I was also uh, going to uh, also if for whatever reason like you just want to like pull up a, a video of a trick or a particular part of the run or maybe like a different route that maybe you don't necessarily do but other people do but you have the information to like explain it pretty much anything goes okay. sure as far as that goes because i'm trying to just get as much info as possible if i can take anything away where i can like implement it so i can record my own footage uh because the goal is to you know make a video explaining the speed run to other people as well as right. like the uh just just the game and the hype around it. I'm trying to see if I can maybe kind of uh, the direction that I'm going for is to kind of show off the brokenness of the game. So the more glitches, the better. Okay. Because I sure. want to kind of point and be like, yo, this game is silly and wacky and crazy. Y'all think Tears of the Kingdom going to be like this? I don't know. Subscribe, please. And that's going to be the whole video. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, do you want me to? I get, maybe I can share my screen. I don't know if this is gonna completely kill my fucking uh, computer, but we're gonna find out. Yeah, I mean, I have your stream just pulled up uh, right now. If okay, you're able that'll to, that'll be fine. Yeah, we'll just do it that way. So, are you cool for me to just uh, to just start? Yeah, go for it. I'm ready. Okay. So uh, the first thing that's important to know, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like stream of consciousness here. So if you have any questions, just let me know at any time. Yeah, go for um, it. So the first thing to note is that there are two versions of Breath of the Wild any percent. Mm -hmm. uh, there is with amiibo and no amiibo. Okay. So with amiibo is the kind of like this is the fastest version of the run possible, um, and no amiibo is the more user friendly uh, version. The time difference is pretty minimal. Um, it's like under a minute or maybe a minute and a half or something. Okay. Um, and uh, it just allows for some quicker item collection, basically, and a few tricks. But for the most part, the with Amiibo is just like, okay, I'm trying to get a goaded time. Uh, I'm going to run with Amiibo. Okay. Um, but the no Amiibo run is like, just fine. That's what most people will do. That's what I do is no amiibo. But How the, hard the is it to get your hands on one of those amiibos? You can dupe it. Um, you can dupe the the like NFC system. Mm -hmm. um, and there, I don't know how because I've never done it because I don't care to run with amiibo. But apparently there is some way to create like fake cards, like amiibo cards. Okay. Um, and so you don't actually have to own the the amiibo. Um, nope. Okay, so we are in the Shrine of Resurrection. Uh, Time begins on uh, gaining control of Link. And so what we usually do is uh, we have a timer that starts at like negative 8.7 seconds or whatever. And then when we skip the cutscene, we start that timer. And the moment it is possible to gain control, uh, the timer starts. Gotcha. And uh, you just go over here and you examine this thing because we need this. We need the Sheikah slate. Mm -hmm. um, Link needs his iPad. Is... Yep. Link needs his iPad because he's at church and uh, it's just hard to pay attention to, to father. So um, uh, also language does matter. Um, I believe the fastest language for any percent is French. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm playing on English uh, uh, subtitles, French audio, but I think the fastest is French audio, French subtitles. OK. Um, so the first thing that happens here is I'm going to start mashing the right stick. Also, I'm really rusty, by the way. Uh, I'm mashing the right stick. The reason is because the first time you pull up the Sheikah Slate, there's this whole animation where he's like, an iPad! Um, and so I'm about to use the Sheikah Slate to do a glitch. So I start by just taking it out here to get rid of that animation. Mm -hmm. And then I press Y, which is the weapon button. Mm -hmm. I don't have a weapon, so Link is just going to like go like, what, my hand? 
but it cancels the Sheikah Slate really quickly. As opposed to canceling the Sheikah Slate with the uh, the right stick, I cancel it with Y because I can like move around immediately. Ah, um, that's neat. Uh, other things to note, just if this matters, uh, in options, I have very fast for the camera sensitivity. That's really the only thing that matters. Yep. Um, other people might do various stuff just for fun, but the camera sensitivity thing is big. Um, yeah, I was messing around with that uh, at the start. It, even on very fast, it's not that crazy. No, 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 not at all. Like, this is as fast as it goes. Yeah. Um, okay, so we are now going to do Shrine of Resurrection skip. Uh, you'll remember from playing the game casually that you have to usually run out into this room and there's like this second tablet you interact with mm -hmm. and there's a big cutscene where Zelda's like, Link, you are the light. And then the door opens and Link is like, oh my God, sunlight. And then you run through the hallway and then you go out and there's that beautiful cutscene that shows you all of Hyrule. We don't want to watch any of that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. One of the big reasons we don't want to watch it is because watching that cutscene is actually what... Uh, starts time of day so in breath of the wild there's a 24 hour clock okay and uh daytime is better than nighttime because at nighttime like stall enemies spawn the skeletons and keys spawn and like so nighttime bad um also this clock dictates weather progressing so like that's how you get rain and thunderstorms and stuff okay uh, is based on the clock progressing so by doing Shrine of Resurrection skip, we never watch that cutscene, so it will permanently be 5.40 a.m. Uh, until we watch that cutscene. Now, for any percent, this is really, really good because there will never be rain. It will always be morning time. Oh, that uh, is really nice. It's really, really good. For other categories, they will do a version of Shrine of Resurrection skip where they do watch the cutscene, but just skip the middle cutscene, um, which still saves time, but they need time of day because, like, for 100%, for example there are time-based quests uh and those won't work unless the time is progressing so shrine of resurrection skip i jump onto this wall and link is like running up my goal and i don't know exactly how this trick works um but basically when i turn around like okay let's say i'm facing north right now okay if I turn my camera south and I pull out the uh, the Sheikah slate, Link Insta turns around in one frame. Like he, like okay, my camera is facing the reverse. I instantly turn around to wherever my Sheikah slate is. It's just like, by pressing in on the right stick. Yeah, it's okay. instantaneous. <clears throat> so what we are going to attempt to do is we are going to run into this corner, this like acute angle where the wall meets the pillar. Uh -huh. um, and I'm going to angle myself at a very specific spot, both Link and the camera. So the tip, if you look down in my mini map in the bottom right, uh -huh. the, the sort of visual cue that I use, and some people use slight variations, uh, the tip of the triangle that dictates where Link is looking, mm -hmm. it's facing just to the right of that little crosshair in the bottom of the sort of square I'm inside of right now. Okay, okay. And then my viewing angle, which dictates where my camera is pointed, the left half of the triangle is in the middle of the top left crosshair. And there are two ways now to do this trick. If you are goaded, you will time the camera press. If you are me, you will mash and... Uh, hope that you press it at the right time because it's based on Link's run cycle when he can pull it out. So I'm just mashing here, and mm. I got it first try, which is kind of stupid. Um, nice. And now I'm out of bounds. So now that I am outside the Shrine of Resurrection, I need to get up. Uh, so there is this wall here, and we're going to go at this second pillar, and the, this is where I'm going to introduce whistle sprinting, so I'll just teach you about it right now while we're out of bounds. Sure. Uh, you probably know about whistle sprinting, but I'll just tell you anyway. So Link's running is obviously very good. Sprinting is very fast, uh, but his stamina meter runs out. Oh, no. But if I hold down the whistle button, which is down on the D-pad used to call horses yep. and mash the B button, it's not even, not even mashing, just like a moderate pressing. Mm -hmm. uh, Link whistles and runs, and this does not exhaust stamina. The one drawback is that this is actually, and a lot of people don't know this, slightly slower than full speed sprinting. Okay. So inexperienced runners will often just whistle sprint everywhere. But what you actually want to do to be optimal is run right until the stamina is about to run out 
and then start whistle sprinting until your stamina fills some them and then you know go back to regular sprinting ah, i see so you want to alternate them efficiently i was going to ask you uh because of uh first of all what controller are you using i'm using the switch pro controller this is what everybody uses perfect much. Uh, and then secondly, what uh, grip do you use to like press all of those buttons? <laughs> Great question. Um, let me see if this is visible on my camera. Okay. Okay. Because I was or... naturally, when I was doing whistle sprinting, I was like, man, I'm like double clawing. Is that like normal? <laughs> this is the grip I use. I point your finger on the left analog stick, thumb on D-pad down. Yep, that's what I was like f figuring. <laughs> thumb on right analog stick, pointer finger on the B button. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was doing too. So I'm I'm glad that it wasn't just me being stupid. But that's actually yeah. No, it's yeah. a it, it's a double claw. Okay. I don't know if there's other strats. There might be. Also, my controller is apparently dying. So I'm gonna get a cord for that. Give me one second. Yeah. No sweat. This is fun, right, guys? Learning so much. I need to start taking notes. I I, I took a couple. But I'll have this VOD to look back on as well. Um, I'll just write down the whistle sprint stuff even though I already know it. Whistle sprint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my goal with this is not necessarily to do a run, but to understand the run and to synthesize it into an educational video. This is interesting stuff. I'm glad you guys are enjoying. Can you remap buttons? I don't think you can remap buttons. I'll ask when ADEF is available again. Okay, I'm back. I was gonna just ask. There's no way to remap any buttons in this game, right? There technically is. Oh, through um, the, the Switch menu? Correct. But, but not the through Switch, the game itself? Correct. Okay. The Switch accessibility menu, it is possible um, to remap buttons. I don't know any runners personally who do that, but I know there are Odyssey runners who do that. Okay. Um, but it is possible. So if you wanted to remap, say, whistle sprint to a shoulder button or something, yeah, maybe. Um, you could do that. Uh, I don't. I don't find whistle sprinting that uncomfortable personally. Yeah, There's I don't... something about double claw that is actually fine. Yeah, single claw usually is a little bit more annoying. Like if I play Elden Ring or from soft games in general for too long, I start to get cramps. But yeah, I mean, you know, whistle sprinting can get taxing over the course of like an all shrine speed run or something for sure. OK, okay. Um, but uh, for any percent, it's not a problem at all. Um, OK, so another benefit of whistle sprinting is that climbing mountains like Link can sprint up a lot of surfaces and so long he is he is still sprinting he will not slide down unless the gradient gets too steep okay so oftentimes you will see runners climb up cliff faces quickly by using the thing where like link you press x to jump quickly and then switching to whistle sprinting when the grade is just low enough and i'm climbing like this and then i'm gonna jump jump a couple more times because it's slightly faster and now i'm running now the big problem is I need to get back in bounds. Oh, it's also cold, which is a problem. So I'm going to come back down here and do this all in one go. Um, so Because uh, you'll the, lose hearts as you know, because Yes, you're... I'll die. Um, Just put a shirt so, on, dude. Like, come on. Now. Seriously, dude. Um, there's a couple spots to clip back in bounds. Most of them are over there. And uh, either trigger the cutscene or like intentionally or not, but are more difficult. But the fastest spot to clip back in bounds is right here. It's pretty precise, but I'm going to crouch under an invisible piece of, it's not invisible, it's just one-sided. Um, it's actually not one-sided. <laughs> There's just a thin piece of wall collision here mm -hmm. um, that I'm going to try to stand up out of crouch. Like that. Ah, I see. Now, I am going to try not to whistle sprint too late because there is a Bacoblin camp down here, and that will alert them. Um, other, different runners have different uh, methodologies for when to whistle sprint here. But my goal here is, one, I want some food. Two, 
I want this pot lid and I need that Boko spear. Okay. So okay. I need to get there before the third Bokoblin gets to this log. Um, Otherwise they pick is, up the spear, yeah. Right, which is why I don't want to alert them because I need the pot lid from them and I need the Boko spear, both of which are things that they will pick up within the first 10 seconds. Um, mm. So I have to get both of these things before they do. Um, some runners will not get as much food as me, but I'm a baby. Um, and so I get a lot of food just for safety. Fair, fair. Um, now uh, my goal is to get over to the Temple of Time. Real um, quick, I did have a, a yes. question uh, Please, from my yeah. chat. And it's a good question. Uh, this is the uh, most recent version of the game, correct? Uh, yes. So this is all being done on current patch? Mm -hmm, correct. Are there any patches that matter for any percent speedrunning? No. No? Okay. They never patched out any like major things that ended up mattering for... Okay. Correct. That's good to yeah. know. It's really cool. Um, worth noting is that you'll notice I didn't have to equip any of this stuff. Um, if it is your first bow or your for first uh, uh, like melee weapon or your first shield, it equips it automatically, oh, okay. which is really nice. But for the rest of the run, if I ever want to swap between any weapons, I will never pull up this menu. This mm. menu is only for eating. That's it. Okay. Okay. I will use I will use the quick equip menu, which is on the D pad for everything from here to the end. Got it. Um, and the quick equip menu actually has some other pretty useful things that we'll get into. Got it. Um, but uh, yeah. So what is going to happen next is I'm going to take a really tight line around this uh, sort of chasm to try to get to the Temple of Time. An experienced runner will shield surf here, um, but the pot lid durability is actually pretty finicky um shield durability is really strange and uh you have to be pretty judicious with where you use your durability and shield surfing does take away from your durability mm -hmm. um so i'm going to not shield surf for the context of uh we're just doing an explanation here okay um but so if you were I'm doing a do... run you would go for it yeah absolutely and then if um, you, your shield just breaks an, an opportune time it's like dang it that sucked and then reset Exactly. Yeah. I also jump into this cutscene as it's happening. I know exactly where it's going to happen. Um, so I jump into the trigger so that I move while the cutscene's procking. Um, and the next thing that is going to happen is um, you have two choices here. One choice is slightly faster. One choice is slightly safer. Um, so, oh God, I have to explain skew. Okay, I'm going to save. Um, also, the saving system in this game, uh, how saves work, not that they matter for any percent, they don't um, really at all, except for backups and safeties. So for a world record, they don't really matter. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, how saving works is when you save, it takes you to the last time you were on the ground out of combat, I believe. Last time you were on the ground out of combat. Got it. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, Auto saving happens whenever the auto save like load thing happens in the bottom left. That's mm -hmm. when you discover an area, get a Korok, talk to a new ad. Like there's tons of different ways to proc an auto save. But anyway, that doesn't really matter. So I save. Um, I'm continuing to sort of sprint and jump around. One of the Bacoblins is feisty. We're going to let him run away. Okay. So this window, if you are doing a world record level speed run, your goal is to clip through this window because on the other side of the window, right behind this wall, um, there is a chest with a bow in it. Mm -hmm. And there is also a pot. And we want both of those things. For me, for my run, so for reference, I have like a 35 minute any percent time. So obviously unoptimal, um, but I would say well above average. Yeah. Uh, so I go around. Um, and I kill this guy, who is also kind of obstinate and annoying. I also attack him in certain patterns so that I don't knock him down until he dies. And then I get in here. But if I were doing an any percent world record attempt, I would not do that. Instead, I would do something that you are going to see a lot of over the course of the plateau, because the any percent run is sort of broken up into two chunks. There's the great plateau, and then there's everything else. Got it. Um, we can call them Great Plateau and Hyrule Castle. Those are the two segments, we'll say. Okay. So the Great Plateau, which the, the true mark of a Breath of the Wild speedrunner is how fast can you get off the plateau. 
Um, a really tremendously good runner should get out beneath 14 minutes, ideally beneath 13. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really, really, really fast. Uh, my PB, let's pull it up. This isn't my plateau PB, but it's what my plateau time is in my any percent PB. Uh, let's go here and open Breath of the Wild, any percent. So I'm off the plateau at 18 minutes, 8 seconds. That's my paraglider time. So that's not mm -hmm. very fast in, in the grand scheme of things, um, but uh, it's, like, fine. Okay. So there is this quirk in Breath of the Wild. There's a cool glitch called skew, spelled S-K-E-W. Mm -hmm. And what skew is is there is this wacky thing where if I land on my shield on anything that is not flat. So let's say I do it right here. Also, I know you know you can do shield jumps like that um, by pressing A in midair while you're targeting and jumping. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so I just landed on a slightly uneven surface. Now, if I shield jump again, but in the middle of the shield jump, I'm going to unequip my shield, okay? So I've gone into the, the, the menu. Sorry, this is not a good example. Give me one second. Uh, let's pay no attention to what I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get a shield jump like here. Okay, now I'm going to do a running shield jump. And I'm going to unequip my shield in midair. This is probably not a great skew spot, but watch Link's model and see how it's probably going to jitter for like two frames to one side. You see that? Uh-huh, yeah, I saw it. That's skew, so named because Link skews to one side. Makes sense, okay. Skew is very interesting because that momentary pop allows you to clip through walls. Um, but something you should know is that not all skews are created equal. Uh, so depending on the incline, like the level of incline you land on, the shield you are using your skew might be bigger or smaller. You can tell if a skew is big visually by Link like fully goes sideways for like two frames. Um, so and yeah, so... I feel like the, the, I feel like the small skew is just fine. Like, why would you want a big skew? I I mean, honest, maybe even an average skew, but like a big <laughs> skew seems like <laughs> kind of scary. Babe, this, is a, this, is, this looks like a big skew to me. <laughs> like, is this not big? Um, so uh, the bigger the skew, the thicker the wall you can get through. And also the more generous the angle is. Because if you have a smaller skew, the angle that you need to clip mm. through certain walls is really, really precise. Yeah, ideally you um, want to skew at a 90 degree angle to the surface so you get the most positionally through the wall. But you might yeah. not ideally get a 90 degree. So yeah, having exactly. a larger skew gives you a, a more leeway there. That makes sense. That makes sense. So uh, every skew spot and every clip that uses a skew spot... Um, like they come in pairs, right? You need the skew spot and then you the thing you're clipping through. Mm -hmm. um, there's like setups for, for those. Right? There's setups. Yeah, exactly. There's setups for everything. Now, let's say I get a bad skew. Uh, so like, let's say this skew that I have is not good enough, which it probably isn't. To get rid of skew, you shield jump onto a flat surface like this. My skew is now gone. So if I do that, you'll mm -hmm. see he has like a little shake, but like it's not as severe. Um, there are other ways to get rid of skew. Um... You can get hit, uh, like blowing yourself up in midair with one of the bomb runes gets rid of skew. Um, there's also a secondary effect of skew that we'll get into in a second. Oh, okay. Um, that uh, is not visible, but we will get there in a moment. Okay, So fine. If, if you are doing a world record level speed run, and I'm going to be honest with you, DB, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to pull this off because okay. I don't do this particular clip. But if you were... You are going for this skew here, where I'm going to drop and shield jump onto that ledge while I'm falling. Okay. And I should have skew now. It doesn't look like I do, so I'm going to try it again. This one is hard. This is one of the harder skews in the run. Um, I know there's a setup for it. That probably didn't work because Link fell. Okay. I'll give it like one or two more shots, but the bottom line is you clip through that window to my right. Okay, and this is all just to save that small bit of time of walking around and having the bacabo and be in your way and shit. Exactly, it gets you right to the chest. It also has the secondary uh, effect of um, you're going to need skew again in about 30 seconds, and this skew spot is good enough to do this clip and the next one. Ah. So you only have to do skew once if you're doing a world record level uh, uh, attempt. It doesn't even have to be world record level. It, you know, top 20 runners are all going for this. 
Mm, okay. Um, uh, the next thing to know about Skew, and you will see a world record do this too, um, is there is a way to land on your shield without removing shield durability. Okay. Uh, so that you can get Skew many times, or you can use the shield more than you should be able to. Uh, and the way to do that, and if you watch my any percent PB, you'll see me do it all the time, um, is I unequip my shield and then re-equip my shield before landing. I can still get Skew, like it still works, mm. but for some reason, unequipping the shield and re-equipping it before landing makes it such that it doesn't remove any durability when you land. Gotcha. So when I, if you ever see an any percent runner miss skew, which will happen, um, so like let's say I'm going for this skew spot and okay, I don't actually have it, I need to remove my skew. The shield durability in the any percent world record is literally routed down to every single jump. Okay. Like to minimize having to unequip, reequip, the pot lid durability is routed to the T. So if they miss skew, they now have to do the unequip reequip. Yeah, otherwise the uh, shield's going to break early. Exactly. Um, okay, any questions so far before I move on? This seems pretty good. Uh, I'm ready, yeah. Great, okay. I'm going to do my, or actually, let's get my durability back, and we'll go from here. Sounds um, good. Chat room, also my chat room, if you have any questions at any point, you can also let me know, um, and uh, I'm mm -hmm. more than happy to answer. Yeah, I was going to say, routing the shield durability is like, I mean, I, I'm not surprised because of all the nerdy stuff that people route in speedruns, but that's one of those things that, like, having casually watched a couple of uh, Breath of the Wild speedruns, you just don't even realize is happening in the background. Mm -hmm. Right? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's really cool. Um, oh, I have to talk about throw sprinting. <laughs> oh, heck wow. yeah. Wow. Oh, God, I love this game. Okay. Um, one of the few speedruns where even after putting thousands of hours into it, I still walk away and I'm like, God damn, this game is good. <laughs> heck um, yeah. Okay, so... Um, We've learned about whistle sprinting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is another type of infinite sprinting that is more difficult to pull off. It's not hard. It's just slightly more difficult. Um, and the reason that it is good is because it doesn't make as much noise. Uh, You'll see okay. in, the, in the bottom right next to my mini map, there's that purple waveform. As I step and move around, that is actually genuinely how much noise Link is making. That's and what that thing does? Yes. You, I, you could have fooled me. You could have told me <laughs> it was for like the vibes, like that he's putting off into the world, and I would have believed no, you. No, so like if I'm crouched and walking around stealthily, you'll see that it's quite, quite low. But you know, if I'm sprinting, it's pretty loud. Uh, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if I whistle, it's very loud, which can be bad if I'm trying to get around an enemy quickly. Makes sense. Because obviously, the stealthiest way is just do this, but this is really slow. So if I don't want to alert an enemy and I have a weapon, I can do something called throw sprinting. So what throw sprinting is, is I'm going to run. So I'm, I'm just like walking at top speed right now. I'm going to press B and R, or if you're holding a dual shock, R1, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the throw button that pulls up this thing. I'm going to press and release them at the same time over and over again. But what is worth noting is that this is not mashing. This is timed. Mm. So it's a rhythm like, and I'm so out of practice, but it's like just shy of mashing. Wow, I'm really out of practice. This is throw sprinting. I'm really bad at it right now because it's been a while. <laughs> um, but uh, the idea is it's about the same speed as whistle sprinting. Um, but the benefit is that uh, you don't alert enemies as much. So when I'm rounding this corner, I don't want to alert the guy right away. So I'm going to like throw sprint a little bit. And then just get in there, throw sprint, pull out my weapon. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. He's dead. And I jump forward at the end of my combo. This is important because when Link goes for the final hit of a combo, he's got that big, like, final swoosh. And this is important for all of the Blight fights that will be coming up later. Mm -hmm. By jumping out, I can, like, cancel this hit lag. Ah, I see. Yeah, you're stuck in that, like, animation and can't exactly. you cancel it by jumping uh to just for throw sprinting because there was a delay on my end when you said this is what it is you're not pulling up the actual throw menu itself like where it goes like third person no. behind the shoulder if you do that then you're doing it wrong otherwise Correct. it's just like link futzing with the the thing on his back yeah it should look like he's taking it out and putting it away really fast over and over again if ever this menu with the crosshair comes up you have fucked up got it um yeah okay 
So uh, a beginner runner at some point in the plateau would get uh, an orb once they or get a uh, an upgrade to stamina or health. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we're not going to do that at any point. Obviously, you need all four shrines to do that, um, but we're not going to do it at all because that is slow. OK, so I'm going to open this chest and get our first bow, the Traveler's Bow. Uh, this will not really be used for much actual firing. It will be used for a glitch called BLSS. All right. <sighs> BLSS is the newest thing in Breath of the Wild speedrunning for any percent. Mm -hmm. uh, newest big thing. And it is new as of September 2021. Got it. Uh, so I am now going to save. I have a command in my channel for it, exclamation BLSS. BLSS stands for Bow Lift Smuggle Slide. Bow Lift Smuggle Slide. You know Zelda Runners in their naming oh, we conventions. Love it. We love it. All right. Okay. So the first thing you need to know about is a uh, an item smuggle. Okay. Um, so there is this thing that's been known about for a couple years where you can smuggle items, so-called, using the bow. And the way it works is like you sort of are able to interrupt a pickup, basically, and you can hold the item or the weapon in your right hand uh, while walking around as if you're not holding an item. Um, this is v was for a long time really not that useful for very many things. Um, you know those segments later in the game where you have to, like, light those blue torches? Yes. It was useful for that because you could run at full speed without putting the torch away. Ah, um, But there is sort of an iteration of this, the bow lift smuggle. Uh, so the first thing is I need uh, arrows because you can't do it unless you are able to shoot. So I need arrows. So I'm going to just, like, run into these pots and to break them, because that's faster than picking up and throwing or breaking with a, a weapon. So I'm just going to run into them. I didn't know you could do that. That's cool. Yep. So now I have arrows. Uh, and now we're going to use this pot. The world record speedrun, I believe what they do is they break just the first pot with the arrow and then use the second pot right next to it. But we are just going to use this one. Um, so to perform a BLSS, and there are a million YouTube videos on how to do this, and they are going to explain them better than me, so I'm going to sort of skirt the details. That's fine. I could always figure that out. So I'm going to Z target, and I am going to... Uh, actually, this is all muscle memory, so I have to like think about it. That's fine. Um, it, yeah, if I'm you don't explain like exactly how to do it, but explain like what it is and why it's important, that's way more important for what I'm trying to do. Okay, great. So I am going to pull out my bow and pick up the item to interrupt the bow pull. And you'll notice that I'm holding the bow and the item. Okay. It looks kind of wacky style. So uh, now, what do I do next? Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. I, I Z target. And my goal is to... Yeah, okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so I jumped... And uh, I was the reason I was holding Z target is because it gives you more frames for what the next part of the trick uh, that I just did. So you don't have to do that, but doing it essentially doubles the amount of frames for the thing I just did, which is while jumping, I press B, which uh, starts to uh, uh, drop the item mm -hmm. out of my hand or put away my bow, one of those two things. And while doing that, I go into my pause menu and manually unequip my shield. The unequipping of the shield uh, and the pressing B are the things that you increase the frame window of by holding Z target. Mm -hmm. um, without Z target, it's kind of precise. With Z target, the frame window is everything after Link reaches the zenith of his jump. So once he starts to fall down from his jump, you have like a zillion frames. Got it. So I, I am now in a sort of further state of the bow lift smuggle and mm -hmm. this next state i if i pull my bow you'll now notice i'm pulling the bow but the item is still in link's hand mm -hmm. i'm now going to press b this looks very normal i am now in a proper bow lift smuggle okay so you 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 got yourself a nice little wristwatch, okay. Yeah, the arrow is weird, the bow is weird, the pot is weird. You normally can't do these three things at all. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, something that is hard to convey, but you might be able to see if you look really closely. Watch when I turn around, Link, like, weirdly gets pushed a little bit. 
Typically, you can turn around without moving, but Link is oh, slightly moving. Yeah, when I, I turn see around. that. Okay, the item in my hand will say for a very bastardized explanation, it's pushing me. That's kind of rude. It has inertia. It doesn't want to move. Okay, okay, okay. Or, or, or it wants to move opposite the way I'm moving. Another thing to note, if I, I'm holding B and not sprinting. Okay. Okay. So that's kind of weird. This next thing is the slide part of BLSS. So now that I'm in this wacky sort of state, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, there mm -hmm. will be this kind of strange thing where if I step up onto a, a ledge, Link like gets suspended in animation for a second. See that? Oh, Jesus. Okay. If I hold B while this is happening, I will stay flying. We, we just fly. We, we just fly. Yes. And now... You just get to fly. Yes, there are a couple of rules to BLSS. Oh my god, to do you're it not even playing the game. You're just <laughs> cheating, dude. I can't believe you. I've been lied okay. to. So BLSS is kind of hard to control, but you pick it up pretty fast. Okay. Um, once you get it down, it, it becomes kind of second nature how to angle yourself, but it's really unintuitive. Um, and looks so strange, and I promise is a lot harder than it looks. Um but once I'm in this state, I'm going to turn around because Link likes to get every object you hold pushes you differently and at different speeds. The best items are generally smaller, rounder objects. Okay. But you can be LSS with anything Link can hold. Wow. Um, uh, this pot is really, really good. Um, and I'm going to turn around and Link is going to start flying in the opposite direction. And then, oh, you can't do it with Cuckoos. Interesting. Um, that's probably because of the whole thing when you're flying with them. Uh, anyway, that makes sense. Yeah, I am going to start giving myself momentum. Uh, and the way I'm going to do this is basically if I turn like to the right or to the left, I start adding a velocity vector in the opposite direction, like the exact opposite direction. Uh... So what I'm going to do is quickly turn left and right in rapid succession so that the vectors are adding behind me, canceling out the horizontal component, and just adding backwards. So I'm just going to get faster and faster and faster and faster uh, in the backwards direction. So you're going to wiggle and go fast. I'm, I'm going to wiggle, but okay. the wiggling has a few rules. Okay. Um, if I ever let go of the B button, Link will fall. Okay. And his velocity will go to zero. Uh, if I ever let the stick, the, the left analog stick, rest in neutral mm -hmm. for even more than a frame, Link will stop and drop. Okay. So once I have the speed I want, I'm going to turn the analog stick around and just face forward, holding forward the whole time so that the stick doesn't rest into neutral. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and additionally, when I'm wiggling, you might think, well, how do you do that without the stick being in neutral? I'm just going to wiggle my thumb so quickly that it is never in neutral for more than a frame. Okay, okay. Uh, so I'm going to now do that. And my goal is to get to the bomb's shrine. So when you wiggle, you're, it's, uh, you're going from like cardinal left to cardinal right, back and forth? Correct. Okay. So you can technically wiggle for, on the bottom half of the controller, but you are moving less, so it doesn't go as fast. That makes sense. So yeah. the f the fastest way to do it is from true left to true right, because that's a big gap. Okay. Um, also, another thing worth mentioning, this is where a beginner would do this BLSS, up this ledge right here that I'm right next to. Yeah. It's also the backup position. Oh, my pot broke because I walked into the wall. Um, if this happens, I need to pull the bow to sort of cancel. And then the biggest thing to cancel the BLSS is to start to throw a weapon. Okay. Um, this the, resets you out of all of the glitchy state yeah, business. I'm that, yeah. fully chill now. You're free. Um, but the place where a world record speedrunner would climb the ledge is right here. Uh, or maybe it, it's on this lip. Basically, I need Link to do... All right, let me show you. There are two kinds of steps in Breath of the Wild. Big step -y. Big step and little step. Mm -hmm. So uh, That's a big step. This is a big step. Mm -hmm. This might actually still work. I don't really know. Um, and yeah, I think that would work. The small step, which is what we like, mm -hmm. is this kind of step where Link just has to like 
Yeah, okay, this is the small step. So the other one is also a small step. It's basically oh. where Link doesn't have to climb a ledge, but it's just before climbing. I see, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what we want, and it is possible to get such a step on this ledge, even though this looks like I'm about to climb. You can do it by shooting your bow, because you can't climb while you're doing that, jumping, and then pressing B. He will climb up without, he'll do like the small step like that. You see that? Oh, interesting. So that's where a world record speedrunner would do it. It is technically more dangerous because if you fuck up, the pot will break because um, it'll hit the wall. But uh, we're just going to do it. Okay, I fucked up. We're just going to do it at my spot because I'm just, you know, whatever. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you're on such a good pace, bro. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm on pace for a four hour run right now. Um, okay. So I am now going to hopefully BLSS over to the bomb shrine. Hopefully. So this obviously cuts out a bunch of just like what would otherwise just be uh, whistle sprinting or like uh, throw sprinting. Yep. Okay. I'm going to pause. Uh, pausing also cancels. Um, so I'm going to fall anyway. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the thing I do now that I've reached the bomb shrine, you can jump out of this state. So what I would typically do is jump and then start aiming my throw weapon, which does two things, cancels me out of everything, mm -hmm. like we just saw. And two, I'm about to do something called a throw cancel uh, or a throw damage cancel. Okay, okay. You can not take fall damage if you do this. This uh, prevents this fall damage. This one simple trick. Wh um, so basically how it works, and it's super easy. Is Game designers start... don't want him to know. Exactly. They you can do this from know. any cliff. You could go do this right now in your game. Just go to the top of a cliff, jump off. While you are falling... Can someone clip that, um, but just end it before he... Uh, it just go to a top of a cliff and then jump off? Please, thank you. <laughs> I need that. Um, when you jump off, when you throw a weapon... Mm-hmm. And then while you are throwing, unequip and re-equip anything from the sub menu. So you can unequip and re-equip your shield, unequip and re-equip the weapon that you're throwing. When you do this, it cancels the throw animation. Okay. And for some reason, there is this weird side effect where it then sets that as the new height you're falling from. Okay. So if you do it right before you hit the ground, you will not take any fall damage or it just won't be lethal. Uh, so I'm going to do that right now. And you actually go through with like starting the throw. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the throw. In fact, the throw can finish. Mm, okay. um, but so I am going to re-equip my shield here. And just the act of equipping or unequipping or whatever. I do, oh, that came from the pot. Um, nice. Uh, just the act of re-equipping my shield from the quick menu canceled the throw and removed all fall damage. So it's that easy. You just throw mid throw animation open up the menu and then unequip or re-equip something yep so the throw begins i unequip and re-equip he didn't actually throw it even though the animation began and bada bing bada boom nice all right this this was initially discovered to um get down from the great plateau tower mm. uh without taking damage faster than climbing down okay makes sense um but you'll notice i haven't raised the great plateau tower yet that is true you haven't um, and the reason that this is relevant is because I could just go over and do it, and a beginner might, but... Well, yeah, the shrine's not all lit up. Exactly. So activating the Great Plateau Tower is what allows you to interact with the shrines. So I can't get in. Let me in! Um, so I'm going to have to clip in, because the pedestal that drops down into the shrine is still there. Oh. Uh, so I just have to get past this wall somehow. And you'll notice that we had a trusty friend we learned about earlier... Uh, skew skew yeah skew i was gonna say i was gonna say skew is this skew gonna be on the test maybe shield clipping maybe not for you guys but this is gonna be on the <laughs> test for me <laughs> so every shrine has a couple different setups it's really personal preference mm -hmm. um this i would say these four shrine clips are the hardest thing to learn and get good at in any percent okay they are also the thing that leaves your body the quickest <laughs> so if you are out of practice it is tough um, also, gyro controls always on. Gyro aiming is super fucking fast. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
cool. So my setup that I use is the baby setup, which I aim for this weird little squiggly lip shaped donut nightmare thing. Mm. Um, Say that one more time. <laughs> squiggly lip shaped weird nightmare donut thing. Okay, um, cool, cool. We're on the same page. Got it. And I'm going to jump from a certain distance away and then shield jump at a certain time. Because I don't know if you know this, but the shield jump doesn't have to have to happen like right away like that. You can do a genuine double jump in this game. Watch this. Yeah, 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 okay. So I am going to try to land right on that thing on my shield. I'm also going to do the quick unequip reequip so that I don't lose any durability just for the sense of this uh, uh, sort of, you know, crash course I'm giving. Makes um, sense. But if you were doing a run, run, you wouldn't need to do that necessarily. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. If you're confident enough that you won't miss it. Uh, or you could just not do it on your first attempt, and then if you miss it, just start doing it as a backup so you don't lose any more durability. Gotcha. An another thing that's important to note is that if I'm swinging a weapon, Link can't move, right? I am holding the joystick forward, and he doesn't move until the animation's over. Mm. But like you saw earlier, I can jump out of this. So if I want to jump without moving, like if I have a position-perfect jump, Ah, you do the attack, cancel the attack and with the jump, but you're already holding the direction. So that exactly. Way, yes, yes. So this is really, really good and will become really important for wind bombing in a second, which is a trick you probably have seen mm -hmm. um, and uh, is the reason we're doing the bomb shrine first. The Great Plateau has undergone a couple reroutes in the history of any percent. BLSS made it so that bombs first is pretty concretely the fastest. Got it. Um, so our route is going to be bomb shrine, Magnesis Shrine, Stasis Shrine, Cryonis Shrine. Okay, so I'm going to get skew. You'll notice my skew is pretty big. It's fucking massive. Um, oh my, and then Jesus Christ, bro. I'm going to get under this second triangle and aim sort of just like right there. And I'm going to do a small shield jump, unequip my shield. And the timing and position and angle are kind of specific. And again, I don't really remember, so I just sort of futz with it. And I'm in. Okay, this is step one. I now need to get back in bounds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can use the skew I already have, and my visual cue is around here. If you lose skew in here, you're fucked and have to go back out and redo it, but I just clip back in. So now I'm back in bounds. This door is still closed, uh, but I can go down into the shrine. Bro, that's crazy. Okay. We now need to talk about wind bombing, which is, in my opinion, the coolest trick in Breath of the Wild. And it's not even close. Uh, also, skip every cutscene, obviously. So I'm going to download the rune to my iPad. Mm -hmm. And while it's downloading, I'm going to start explaining this. So there is bullet time in Breath of the Wild. Um, when you pull the bow, if you are a certain distance above the ground or higher you will go into bullet time, which is the sort of like matrix style. You can aim around fast, but the world is moving slow. Mm -hmm. While you are in this state, the way that Link is like, the way his speed changes is kind of like futzed with to make it feel fast. Uh, and we can kind of abuse that to like take damage or shield jump while in bullet time and go crazy fast. Mm-hmm. Before BLSS, this was used to do bullet time bouncing, which was the fastest way to get to Hyrule Castle. It was the fastest way to get around the plateau. It was also really fucking hard. Uh, and that involved shield jumping onto enemies while in bullet time at specific angles and flying across the map. Is that completely um, like removed from the speedrun now? I think there is one on Great Plateau that's technically like a second faster than BLSS, but it's so inconsistent that nobody goes for it. Ah, uh, gotcha. Because um, I remember me on that. I remember Twitter going crazy when that was discovered like a few years ago. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it was the standard until literally like fall of 2021. Got it. Um, so we now have bombs. And the beauty of this is when I jump and place the bomb room in, in midair, it lands behind me. So it, it lands in midair while I'm jumping. And I can do this with the square or the circle. Mm. Um, now, the beauty of this is I can, if I place the two bombs in quick succession while Link is in midair, and then I go into bullet time, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I blow up the bomb that is furthest from me, it will strike the bomb in between the two of us, but not me, and then that middle bomb 
will then fly forward really fast and hit Link as a physical object instead of as like a bomb or whatever. Just imagine that it's like a barrel or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll and send when you that flying. second, it sends you flying. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are like one million rules to wind bombing, and when you first learn, you're like, "Oh, bomb, go fast, we." Yeah. It's... But once you start getting advanced. There is a there's a great fucking YouTube video that I recommend to anybody who's trying to become intermediate or better at Breath of the Wild. Um, uh, fuck, I can't remember the runner's name, but they made like an all encompassing masterclass on wind bombs. Mm. Um, and it is like 30 minutes long oh, and wow. it is just all the intricacies of wind bombing. There's another name for wind bombing too, B.I.L. or bomb impact launch, but nobody calls it that. Um, and anyone who calls it uh, Boomy Zoomy should be killed. Um, <laughs> Wow, cool. okay. So, um, we have a small problem, though. Okay, okay. I mentioned before that a way to cancel skew was to take damage. Yes. Um, so, this thing that cancels skew when you take damage, when it happens, Link also stops in midair. This is obviously bad for us. Because you want to um, do the zoomies. Yes, 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 yes. And skew, weirdly, persists through load zones. It persists through cutscenes. Like, skew is still... I still have skew. I can show you right now. It's still there. Please stop so, showing me your skew, please. <laughs> I, said, um, I showed you my skew. Please respond. <laughs> so there are now two ways to fix this, because now that we have bombs, we'd like to, to win bomb across this shrine. We don't want to do the shrine. That's slow. Mm -hmm. I will probably end up doing the shrine just because I'm bad, and this is genuinely the hardest wind bomb in the route. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there are two places to do it. There is this, which is the safer spot, where you like line up kind of here and wind bomb, and it should land you about halfway through the shrine. And then there is, and this is genuinely the name of this trick, the gamer wind bomb. Uh, so named because it's like the hardest wind bomb in the run, and it's not even close. So you need to be a gamer, is what you're saying where you stand on this pedestal, aim at a specific spot, go into bullet time after placing the first bomb, and wind bombing takes a long time to get good at. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wait a specific amount of stamina dial, then place the square bomb, then circle bomb, then aim, then wait again, and then detonate at a certain time on the stamina wheel. And if done properly, this should land you at the end of the shrine. Oh, that's really um, cool that you're using the stamina dial as like a timing mechanism for all of yes. this. Yes, the stamina dial as a, it's the only visual cue. Okay. Because that, yeah. you could use Link's position as a visual cue, but, but that's because you're very like, fucky wucky. Exactly. The stamina dial is perfect for this. It just so happens it's like super good. Mm -hmm. um, I can't go for this one because I never got rid of my skew. But please don't examine. Don't examine. I'm going to kick this like a soccer ball so I don't examine. Um, okay. The two ways to get rid of skew. There is a permanent fix and there is the so-called quick fix. Also, am I going into too much detail? No, this is fine. Uh, if anything, uh, I'm probably just gonna have to rewatch this VOD a couple of times to redo some notes, but that's perfectly fine by me. I will say I'm, I went into this being like, oh, I'll, I'll learn a little bit about uh, Breath of the Wild because, you know, it, the new game's coming out. And now I'm like, bro, I kind of want to learn the run. This looks kind of sick. Run is, the any percent run is really rewarding. Uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite speedruns I've ever done. Yeah, I, I'm. I actually might actually maybe possibly try it. Um, the only downside is like, okay, hypothetically this is a, a tangent, but like, are there like practice tools that exist for this, or is it really just load up your game? Not really. Ah, oh, that's rough. The the only quote unquote practice tools are making multiple switch profiles. So okay, your that's save fine. in Breath of the Wild is tied to your profile. I see, I see, um, I see. And so long as you never make a manual save, your manual save will stay forever. Uh, so auto saves just make... You have six save slots in Breath of the Wild. There's the main save, which is the manual one, and then there's five auto saves. Okay. Uh, and those auto saves overwrite, but the main one will never unless you manually save. Uh, you can also do the absolute goaded strat, which is pay for Switch online, upload your saves to the cloud, and then download them. Okay. Uh, so that works. Um, anyway, uh, so the quick fix. Mm -hmm. um, the quick fix is good because this skew that I have is still good enough to get into the next shrine. Oh, um, so you, 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 you don't want skew right now, but some skew later would be nice. Right. 
I usually get rid of it because there's another wind bomb after this that's also kind of hard. Um, but uh, a world record speedrunner would still have the skew from the Temple of Time window mm. and use that for the first 10 minutes of the run. Wow. So the quick fix, and I don't really know exactly why this works, but the way I understand it is the spot at which you got skew. If you wind bombed right there, you would like be okay. Kind of. But the quick fix, like if I were to wind bomb, that's not important. I'm not going to explain that. Okay. If I were to wind bomb right here, it wouldn't work. The quick fix is I go to the spot I want to wind bomb at, and I do a shield jump and unequip my shield. Now I should be able to wind bomb right here and nearby. But if I go far away, it will not work. That's fucking weird. <laughs> It's really strange. I have set this as my like quick fix location. Wow, you're just this is like this is my safe my safe zone. Uh, exactly. No skew allowed. <laughs> um, so now I could try the gamer wind bomb from here. The other way to do a quick fix, uh, or to do a permanent fix, is to blow yourself up quickly. Mm -hmm. um, the way to do this is just drop a bomb and detonate it. Uh, I killed myself because I have low health. Um, but if you have full health, this is also important. There is something called one hit protection in this game, which is where if you have full health and you take a hit that should kill you in one hit, you will go to one quarter heart. Gotcha. So you can't um, die in a single hit um, outside of health. fall damage, right? Uh, yes. Uh, I think there's also sometimes the the one hit protection doesn't always work. I don't really know the intricacies of it, but most of the time, mm -hmm. if you are attacked by some kind of attack from full health and it would kill you, it takes you to quarter heart like this. Gotcha. So my skew is all gone, blah, 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 blah. The only thing to note is that uh, getting hit by your bomb during wind bomb, like when the second one strikes you, it does one full heart of damage. So I need to have at least one heart. So one and one quarter is plenty. Uh, that's enough to do a wind bomb. So we can try this one. I am not going to get it, but we can try it for fun. Yeah, let's see it. Okay, that was actually pretty good. That was half of it. So I would eat in midair so that I didn't die when I landed. Oh, um, okay. Okay. Once you have the paraglider, this is obviously not a problem because you can just pull the paraglider. And then you um, don't take fall damage. Exactly. But since I don't have that, I and you can't, you can't really throw out of a ragdoll, so I can't do a throw damage cancel. Um, so, so as soon as you go for the 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 wind bomb, it's like without the you're paraglider, you're just you you have to land where you land. There's no, um, uh, no. <laughs> God damn it! In these short like ceiling areas, yes, where I'm not flying that far. Um, but Link only ragdolls for a couple of seconds and then he exits ragdoll mm. and then you could do a throw damage cancel or in after you have paraglider, you just pull the paraglider when that happens. Oh, so okay, basically gotcha. after you wind bomb, you start mashing paraglider, which is the jump button. And whenever he exits ragdoll, you just pull it right away. Um, gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. But in this short of a distance, I don't have enough time to exit ragdoll. Uh, so I will take fall damage. So I have to eat to like save my life. Uh, anyway, we're just going to go through the shrine like normal really quick just so I can get through it. Mm -hmm. We now know like all the stuff we need to know, um, which is good. Uh, we can just start kind of plowing through the plateau. And for reference, here. like if you were on like, a, let's say world record pace, they'd be yeah. like how many minutes into the run at this point? Five. <laughs> Actually, probably four. That's wild. Um, the backup strat, and this does happen in world records pretty often. Um, your goal is to make it up there with the gamer wind bomb, but oftentimes you will land down here. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is the backup. You sort of aim parallel to the wall, throw the square bomb, detonated in midair. I killed myself. Epic. Um, I'm a little bit out of practice, as you might have surmised by now. Um, the goal is to blow up the 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 little block yeah. up there. Yeah. You're supposed to put it in the catapult and like do the catapult. Um, but you can sort of cheese it basically. Gotcha. Also, there's the, the timer that, uh, starts every time I blow up my bomb and I like can't use it. So I just switch back and forth between the bomb runes to sort of bypass that timer. Ah, okay. 
Is how uh, then, how long is that timer if you don't do that? Uh, let's find out. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. Oh wow, it's, it's pretty like long. Five or six seconds. Okay. So definitely bad. There we go. Okay. And again, I whistle sprint till full stamina and then run and hit the monk. Now, there is actually something to explain here. Uh, it was discovered by accident a couple of years ago, as all good speedrun things are. Hell yeah. That, so first of all, there's two cutscenes to skip here. So there's this first cutscene after you break the thing, you skip that right away. He gives you the orb. And then you clear the orb text and a second cutscene starts. You would think it would be fast to just skip the cutscene right away. It was discovered by accident by a runner called I Love Vark that if you skip the cutscene after the monk starts to dissolve, the load screen that happens after is faster. Um, cool. Yeah. You love to so hear that. So the sort of visual cue is you wait for the text to fully disappear and then you start to skip. And this load screen is genuinely noticeably faster, like several seconds. Um, and so it really adds up over the course of a longer run. In this run, it saves probably about 10 seconds uh, over wow. the course of the total run. This is the first time the old man's going to come speak to us because we skipped the tower. So this is our first time talking to him when normally it would be like the second or third time. Um, these text options do matter. I think it's down, up, up, down, but I don't really remember. But the he gives different answers depending on what you say. And that's just um, a minimized text. Correct. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, upcoming... I am going to do something a world record run would not do, which is I'm going to pick up uh, a uh, an ingredient, a, a cooking ingredient nearby. Mm -hmm. um, a world record run would not do this because they get the ingredient elsewhere. It's just that the ingredient they get is um, less forgiving. And the reason this all matters is because I'm going to need an attack up elixir for the boss fights because I'm about to fight the bosses after only playing the game for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. So the way to jack your damage is to make a triple up attack elixir. Okay. If you are bad, like me, you need as much time as possible on this triple up attack elixir, uh, which for me is like I need at least four or five minutes to beat every boss. Uh, four or five minutes total to beat all five bosses. Um, whereas a really great runner will only need about three or four minutes. Uh, but I am going to get the thing. You would bliss right here over to the Magnesis Shrine, but I am going to get a beetle that is on this nearby tree. Again, a world record run would not do this. This is an additional ingredient to extend the length of the, the potion, essentially? Uh, for all intents and purposes, sure. It's a little more complicated than that. Cooking in this game is weirdly complex um yeah i never understood it i just threw shit together and hoped for the best i want this bladed rhino beetle and this is the backup blss location i came up with mm -hmm. um is to do it on this tree trunk uh the other beautiful 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 thing about the bombs first is we can now just use bombs for blissing because it's a pick upable item ah so you don't need no no pots anymore so you can bliss anywhere now, you'll notice I just fell just then. Blissing up inclines is really, really fucking weird. Uh, and you have to, like, be really particular about the way you angle Link when it is happening. So I'm going to just try to focus for a second and get this. Because mm -hmm. um, if he starts walking or anything, the bliss will just cancel. Let's try to... So I'm going to try to angle around here Ugh, fuck off all right let's do it here i think you can also step up here uh the square bomb and the circle bomb i think the square is slightly better than the circle for blissing but it gives you really... different speed yeah it's very slightly better i think mm. um i don't really don't quote me on that okay uh, also worth noting, there is a speed cap, and if you ever hit the speed cap, the game will set your speed back to zero and you have to recharge. Um, so the goal, and you slowly decrease speed over time. So the goal of Blissing is to hit the speed cap, stay there, and then when you start slowing down, get back up to the speed cap again. 
uh the reason the speed cap exists is not because the game is like whoa there bud you're going too fast it's because uh the game starts to lag uh and you can't process you moving that quickly sets your speed back to zero the the nintendo switch can't process the game that's <laughs> why so there are a couple visual cues to see if you have are at the speed cap and we'll cover that once we're blissing to hyrule castle because that's the longest one in the game yo what's up off um uh I don't know if it's exactly the game can't process it, but definitely the game starts to lag a lot and sets yeah, your speed back I've, to zero. Yeah, I've seen it chug before where you're like going over uh, like big chunks and then it's just like stops. Yeah, it has to stop and load. That's fine. But if you hit the speed cap, you'll you'll stop. So mm. there are a couple ways to mitigate this. One, uh, looking up or all the way down reduces lag in this game by a lot because you're loading less polygons. Makes sense. Um, and... Uh, the 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 next thing to note um is that the way to tell basically if you're at the speed cap is yeah, we'll get there we'll get there we'll get there we'll okay. get there we'll get there so um that's a dlc chest doesn't matter um are you got the dlc to, i know bro it actually matters in certain categories that's, um that's, it well, doesn't yeah, matter in this one um okay i am going to just in case get rid of any skew i might have even though i probably don't um this again if you're doing world record speedrun you just use the skew you already have mm -hmm. uh, i'm gonna do a backup uh because i'm out of practice and slow so i'm just gonna do the old setup um i think this skew is really cool you skew right there and then you aim like he no no here clip in that one's not frame perfect but close the clip in is like almost frame perfect oh wow and then this clip back in bounds is really annoying. And you jump back in bounds, bada bing, bada boom, we're going in. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, now that I'm seeing this, this is like, oh my God, this video is going to be brutal to make. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much. Good luck. Yeah. Um, when, when does uh, Tears of the Kingdom come out? How much time do I have? Mid-May, I think. Okay, this is doable. Um, okay. Uh, Magnesis, this is a wind bomb I don't know how to do, um, but there is a gamer wind bomb in here, too. Um, and uh, I'll show you where it is. This one, I know, ends Player 5's world record attempts all the time. Um, in fact, this one, I don't really know, but maybe it's, uh, harder than, uh, the Gamer Wind Bomb and Bombs Shrine. But you start, also, a nice thing is that it auto-equips the new rune you got. So I'm going to, uh, move this metal door. Great, fall in the water, perfect. Um, I'm gonna come over here, and you Wind Bomb from right here. You climb up this staircase. You get on this ledge and you wind bomb to the end of the shrine, basically. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to do that. Um, the backup is you just like go through here. Do the normal. And uh, this guy does like no damage. I can't hear the audio. Usually I use an audio cue to know when to swerve out of the way of the bullet that's coming, like right now. He's mm -hmm. not shooting. Uh, so you just shield jump across this. Oh. There it is. Uh, so he just hit me, which might have removed my skew, but I want my skew gone. But I have too much health now. Uh, or not enough health. So I'm going to eat this and do the quick fix. Or the, the permanent fix, pardon me, by blowing myself up on the way. Mm -hmm. The beauty... The, oh, this is actually good. Okay. The reason why that quick fix thing is important is because the reason skew fucks up wind bombs is it removes your ability to ragdoll. Oh, and you need to ragdoll to wind bomb. And so by blowing myself up, I reset my sort of like state so that I can ragdoll again. Write that down, write uh, that down. And uh, so by blowing myself with the with the bomb, I don't ragdoll and fall over and lose a bunch of time. I just sort of get like boosted a little bit. Yeah, I noticed I that you just the... you kind of just like shrugged it off like it was nothing. Sometimes it ragdolls you. I don't really know why, but most of the time it. I mean, shit. we're talking about skew here. Like, we're shit's wacky already. It's wacky. It's yeah. wacky. Like with everything in Zelda speedrunning, you could like get a PhD in every individual glitch. Jesus. Um, okay. Uh, I think everybody uses the same bliss spot here. The world record might bliss somewhere nearer to where Link is right now, mm -hmm. but 
I bliss up here. Um, hashtag blissed. Hashtag blissed. I'm blissed up. Um, this is the hardest bliss in the run uh, for reasons you will see. So I've got my bliss set up. I'm going to step up this little ledge right here. My goal, if you see that skull Bokoblin camp in, in the far distance, uh -huh, uh -huh. there is a bridge right there. My goal is to thread the needle under that bridge and then bliss up an incline to gain height and bliss over to a tree that I am going to wind bomb from. That is my goal. Uh, so this is this is a much harder bliss than most of them because it really is aim precise. So I'm not going to charge up to max speed because I can kind of angle a little better when I'm slow. Mm -hmm. And now I want to cut this way. And do this. I fell. OK, uh, if you turn around while you're going up the slope, you often fall. Um, so your goal is to have enough speed built up that you can make it up the incline. And then you sort of just weave between these trees. Um, and your goal is to get over here. The backup shot would probably be to bliss off one of these tree trunks, but I'm not really going to worry about it. Mm, okay. um, so we're going to come over here. Also, people like to meme about the fact, you probably can't hear it on Discord, but uh, the analog stick noises when you are blissing, they are very loud. Gotcha. Um, I mean, I hear it a little uh, bit, yeah. Sure. So uh, the world record bliss, uh, wind bombs from this tree. Um, the reason we need to wind bomb is because the stasis shrine is up there. Mm. Uh, and the vanilla way is you chop down a tree, go across the tree trunk, and climb arduously all the way to the top by using these ledges. Jesus. It's a cool segment in the plateau that teaches you how to climb, but that is not what we want to do. Um, so the world record wind bombs from the top of this tree. I personally like to pick up an apple or two as a backup. And I come to this tree. This is just a setup that I like for this wind bomb. This wind bomb is very hard, um, but absolutely necessary if you are doing this route. So I use this to aim, and I aim at this spot and Z target. Uh, I'm going to hopefully do this. This wind bomb, a lot of wind bombs, you can kind of just do the same timing for everything. This is another case of I'm going to use the stamina wheel. Gotcha. Because I imagine the longer you're falling, it changes the angle at which the bomb hits you, which changes. Exactly. Precisely. Yep. And I did it first try. Um, Let's go, gamer. Which is great. Um, so uh, that I practiced that for a million hours. Um Yes, there are two kinds of wind bombs. There are distance wind bombs and height wind bombs. And mm. basically, the only difference is how close together did you place the bombs? How long are you waiting to blow them up? Uh, and that will dictate, are you going further faster or higher and slower? Gotcha. Uh, so in that one, that is a height bomb. I wanted to go really high. I don't care how fast. Uh, but if I'm trying to go across the map, I'll do a fast wind bomb um, where I don't care as much about the height. Uh, okay, we now need to get into the Stasis Shrine. Same thing, rinse, repeat. We just need to get in. This game is um, so neat. Right? It's uh, just so neat. I th think I'm going to use this same visual cue. That was not good, I think. Yeah, okay. So I need to come to a flat surface. Reset my skew. I saved, right? I think I did. Uh, before or after the wind bomb? After. I have no clue. Uh, that might be enough. This one sucks. I fucking hate this shrine clip a lot. Um, the other three are like literally totally fine. <laughs> I hate this one. So they don't use the same like collision for each shrine. It's like no. individually different. Yep. <laughs> Nintendo. And the height, the height at which like they are very similar, but it's more about the placement near the ground. Oh, that makes sense. But some of them are different. Yeah. This should be enough skew. I just need to remember my visual cue. Okay. And then luckily, this is the easiest one to clip back in bounds. Uh, you crouch, and then you walk up to... Because the pedestal is so low to the ground. You just press B, and then, like, within five frames, press A. Oh, and it clips you just enough in without needing to do mm -hmm. anything fancy. Yep. Das cue. 
I don't know. Five frames is bullshit. I don't actually know how many frames it is. I totally am probably lying. Uh, Stasis Shrine, timing matters because, uh, as you can see, that platform next to me is already rotating. So you want to get to this thing as fast as possible because your goal is to get everything in this shrine is on a cycle. Mm -hmm. um, there is a wind bomb in world record here, too. I, this is another one I don't know. You wind bomb off this ledge uh, just past the platform. Um, and you wind bomb to the end of the shrine. I think this one is more forgiving, but I just don't know it. But again, you should watch Player 5's world record and, and check it out. Yeah, I definitely uh, will. So I'm going to pause that unpause okay well i fucked it up you're supposed to unpause it as you're walking off of it because you need the stasis rune again in a second to stop a boulder mm. uh, and the earlier you release stasis the quicker it charges back up gotcha so instead i probably can't make this cycle you're no i can you freeze that as it's coming down uh i don't get this iron sl i don't think anybody gets this anymore the iron sludge hammer um, okay, I'll gotcha. get one later for backup, but I don't think anybody gets it anymore. The vanilla way to solve this puzzle, and this trick has been known since like launch day, um, is you're supposed to stasis this boulder and just like strike it once. Yeah, and then it uh, moves. I'm going to shield jump around it. Oh. Or they really just gave you a double jump in this game and thought that that's it's okay. It's really cool. It's really cool. Um... It's a turn wind bomb. Okay, yeah. I didn't want to get into that really. <laughs> um, but there are subsections of the subsections of wind bombs. Um Is this in the wind bomb uh 30 minute it dissertation? Is. Okay. I definitely will it want is. to watch that then at some point. Um there's turn bombs and actually this is worth it's worth explaining this really quick, actually. Sure. So the circle bomb is a circle uh it's a sphere right so it sort of doesn't matter which direction you place it it's a sphere uh-huh uh-huh when i place the square when i pick up the square bomb it just comes in link's hands but if i place it in midair it always faces true north so the square bombs faces face the cardinal directions oh. north east south and west so if i aim let's say diagonally in an ordinal direction and i do it you'll notice that it the corner is pointing to my back. Oh, oh, okay. So when I place the square bomb behind me to do a wind bomb, angle matters a ton. Uh, namely, there are dead angles on the square bomb where Link will not get a wind bomb, uh, and instead will just like fall over. And this is uh, the square bomb is the uh, object that is hitting Link, correct? Correct. Okay. There are wind bombs where the square bomb hits the circle bomb, and then the circle bomb hits you. Um, but most of the time, the square bomb is the one that's hitting you. Okay, that makes sense. Probably just because um, of surface area and Yes, angles. it's just really good. Okay. Um, so when I do a wind bomb, 80% of the time, and especially if you're a beginner, I am either aiming in a true cardinal direction so that the flat face hits me, mm -hmm. or I am aiming in a true diagonal ordinal direction so that the corner hits me. Gotcha. And anything in between is a little sus. Yes, um, there are dead angles just around the ordinals and cardinals. The ordinals are less forgiving than the cardinal directions. Mm -hmm. um, the cardinal directions are pretty hard to fuck up. Yeah, the uh, ordinal directions are it, more. It's difficult. a corner. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, also worth noting is that though there are turn bombs where you aim off of a cardinal or off of an ordinal, and after you place it, and here I can probably show it to you. If I can get bullet time here. Okay, I can't get bullet time here. I'll show it to you later. But basically, you jump in such a way that you're just off one of those positions. And while in bullet time, you aim in midair to turn links back to face it. Uh, and for some reason, this makes you go faster. Oh. Um, so oftentimes, you will set up wind bombs specifically to do turn bombs. Uh, yeah, okay. Now, getting up on top of this cliff, I'm going to be real with you. I am really bad at this trick and always have been for some reason, uh, so I'm not going to do it. But the way to get up this cliff quickly is you stasis this boulder and strike it from below, and then you just climb on top of it. This is not a glitch. And you just ride it to the top. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's really cool looking. It's perfectly vanilla and cool. Like, it doesn't it's not any glitch or anything. The pioneers used to ride uh, yes, these babies exactly. for miles. <laughs> exactly. exactly. 
Um, I'm just going to climb the thing like a little bitch baby boy. Gotcha. Um, Clearly not a pioneer. Correct. Uh, I get this iron sledgehammer for safety, just in case I break my weapon for whatever reason. Again, you would not do this. Um, you mm. just use the Boko Spear until you have better shit in Hyrule Castle. Yeah. I was going to say, uh, what happens, like, are there backup shields for babies anywhere in the run? Uh, you would never get a world record if you broke your shield. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying for like a beginner. Like, yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I, in fact, in my any percent run, I pick up one or two backups. Okay, gotcha. Um, but you pick them up in Hyrule, field, uh, in Hyrule Castle. Gotcha. So if you break your shield on Plateau, you should just reset. Um, gotcha, gotcha, okay. gotcha. You have just enough stamina to jump four times. Uh, oh, this is important too. I, I keep doing things and realizing, oh shit. Um... When you are out of stamina, Link walks really slowly. Mm -hmm. the, the fastest way to move when you can't sprint and can't run at top speed or whatever is to Z target and walk forward. Okay. So I am Z targeting and walking forward while my thing is recharging. I'm going to pull out my bombs because you guessed it. I'm about to do another bow lift smuggle slide to get across the big open waterfall area. Gotcha. Um, let's just do it right here. So I'm going to blow up that tree trunk. I should use the circle, but it doesn't really matter. I'll just wait. Um, so I'm going to bliss here. This bliss is cool, in my opinion. I think this one is neat. I thought they were all neat, but, you know. They are, but, you know. Uh, so I have to, like, get around this first mountain. So I don't want to go too fast, because the faster you are, the harder it is to change directions. Mm -hmm. But you, if you were going fast, you would, like, change in midair like this. Blissing is bad for the hands, FYI. <laughs> gotcha. Um, and I come over here. Blissing literally revolutionized Breath of the Wild. It, like, completely changed the game. I mean, um, you get to fly. Yeah, it's really cool. Some people think the speedrun is less cool now. I personally disagree. Um, okay, I'm here. I'm going to equip my shield, and I'm going to save. So I mean, this is the easiest shrine clip in the run. Uh, this one can be done by babies. Uh, I'm going to do the normal one. However, there is a faster way to get into this shrine because with the way I've been shield clipping, I get skew, I clip in, and then I have to clip back in bounds. Mm -hmm. You could bypass this if the place you clip through is the door because then you just clip into the other side of the door, right? Oh, yes. The problem is the door is really thick. Uh, and so it is much harder to clip through solid collision like that and so you have to do what's called an extended shield clip or esc mm -hmm. uh i think that's what it stands for somebody in chat can correct me if i'm wrong about that but basically it is a more difficult version of a shield clip you still use skew um but i think it has two frame perfect inputs um you can pause buffer in this game by using the quick menu like this Oh, okay. So they use that to pause buffer to do the trick, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do the normal one, but again, you'd see it in a world record. So this skew I get right here. I line up by jumping against this. Not like that. I jump against this. Also, this one has to be done fast because you are dying. Aren't we all, though? Like, slowly? True. Um, ideally, I would never have to eat here, but this is why I picked up the extra food for wind bomb backups and for this. Mm. And again, this one is so free. It literally it couldn't be easier. Yeah, the BTBs are cool. They definitely were like a very cool uh, uh, thing for sure. Um, but I think BLSS is more beginner friendly and so leads to more people being able to be competitive or at least get to a competitive level, which I think is great. I mean, I, I'm seeing you fly around, and I'm like, I, I want to do that. And you can, and you will. I, I, want, I want to go. I want to fly. Um, I'm about to pee my pants. I was going to um, say we should probably pick a time to, like, take a break, because, I mean, we're about to be done with the um, plateau So why don't we finish stuff. the plateau, and then, uh, and then we'll, we'll take a break. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay, so this is our final rune. Uh, you'll notice there's an empty rune slot on the far right. Um, uh, that, that's that is Amiibo, the, right? Let's see Amiibo, which again, I'm not using, but the yeah. world record does. Gotcha. It is two different categories, but whatever. Uh, I'm going to eat and go for this wind bomb um, because the world record does, and this is one I actually kind of know how to do. Gotcha. So again, I, I still have skew. It's the camera. No, the camera gets its own slot, maybe? Because the camera and the Amiibo both are up here. One of them is visible. It doesn't fucking matter. This does not matter. 
Um, I'm going to do the quick fix. And then I'm going to line up like here. This wind bomb is a little finicky. Oh, I had the wrong rune equipped. So again, I did the quick fix so that I can get my ragdoll back. Because mm -hmm. I have... Oh, that's what it's called. It's a side effect of skew called ragdoll glitch. And uh, I don't have it anymore, at least right here. I did it. Okay, awesome. I literally can't believe I just got that. Nice. Because <laughs> I am not practiced. But anyway, boost you right up here. And obviously, you know, skipping as much of these shrines as possible is uh, pretty cool. Exactly. Okay, that is our final orb. Uh, so now we just need to get to the Temple of Time. And the beauty and reason of this routing, why we come to Cryonis last, is because this is the highest point on the plateau. And so we can bliss over and drop down onto the top of the Temple of Time, which is where King Rome mm. is waiting for And there's us. nothing in your way you don't have to worry about. Exactly. It's yeah. right over there. You, you can literally, you can see it. He has a cutscene here, but you can see it over there. Oh. Um, so we're just going to bliss over there and drop down. We will have to do a throw damage cancel. Yep. The any percent world record ditches the Boko Spear on this cancel. Um, so they let it fly away out of Link's hand. Mm -hmm. The reason they do that is because the next weapon they pick up will auto-equip. Oh, saves them some menu timing. Exactly. Uh, so I'm going to pull out the square bomb, do this. Or no, is it the circle bomb that's better than the square bomb, but the square bomb's just easier? I think that's what it is. So I think the circle bomb's faster, but the square bomb is easier. Uh, and the skew spot, or the uh, bliss spot is right here. Is there it's a sparkle a quiz easier. to figure out, like... Or uh, not Sporkle, what is it? Is there a... Uh... Oh my god, I'm blanking. This joke isn't working. <sighs> I'm floundering. I'm floundering. What's the Kahoot? name of... Not Kahoot. The, the the really crappy, like, take a quiz to find out, like, which fucking Hogwarts house you are. Oh, oh, like, uh, um, uh, 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 not Clickhole, but the real one. BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed. Jesus Christ. The, the joke isn't funny anymore, but is there a BuzzFeed quiz to determine whether you're a square bomb or a circle bomb? That was the joke, guys. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm gonna fix that in post. Um, okay, a couple things worth noting. You saw a few lag stops there. Yeah. Uh, where the game has to stop to load. Um, I did the throw damage cancel and I almost fucked it up because, and this is not important for the video, I just wanna say it because it's so fucking annoying. Uh, the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller D-pad is dog shit yeah, yes, on yeah, every yes, single yes, one. Yes, 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 yes. So sometimes if I press D-pad left too high, I will get D-pad up like yep, that. Yep, 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 yep. So I almost died. Um, Anyway, no, dude, what are you talking about? Nintendo quality control. They got that shit on lock, bro. <laughs> fucking... There's no such thing as Joy-Con Drift. <laughs> um, so we've got a couple cutscenes to skip through here. And then your plateau ends on ba -da -da split on the paraglider. Makes um, sense. And that is where the great plateau run stops, which is also a competitive category. Mm. But it's just the first part of any percent. But people mm -hmm. have it as like their own separate. That's cool. I dig yeah, that. It's it's pretty, and the beauty of it too is you do both runs. Yeah. So like, if your any percent run is terrible, but you got great plateau world record, like that's sick. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Okay, so we have the bow, or pardon me, the paraglider, um, and you may have guessed that we are now going to BLSS over to Hyrule Castle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, we used to bullet time bounce from a Bacoblin that is beneath me right now. Uh, I cannot tell you how happy I am that we can just bliss now. I fucking hate this BTB. You want to um, take that break, though, real quick? I do. And that's one of those Are things you... about, like, learning about speedruns, too, is that it just it's just this own can of worms that just gets deeper and deeper the more you dig into it. Especially, like, the, the goaded games, I will say. They, yeah, there's no, always absolutely. so much depth to them. And it takes people years completely. to like accumulate that knowledge and then to execute on it. And it's so cool. It's, it's so cool. This has been cool for me too, because like, I'm realizing I know a lot more about this game than I thought. <laughs> like I just by osmosis of like all the time I spent with it. I just know a lot about it. Heck yeah. Um, one second, please. Oh man. Okay. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, so we want to bliss now. So we're going to mm -hmm. come up here. And uh, we are going to take out a bomb. Again, I 
think you're supposed to use circle bomb here, but it blows in the wind, which is annoying. Um, and then I need to get around this corner, so I'm going to Z target to move around it. And then I am going to do that thing from the beginning you might remember where I want to climb up on this ledge, but the ledge is too tall. So I'm going to jump and press B at a certain time so that Link climbs up it as if it were a short ledge. Gotcha. Like that. And now I'm blissing through the sky, baby. So this is a really long bliss with a lot of loads, and you don't want to be caught in a load with your control stick in neutral. Mm, because then but it you drops do, you, yeah. You do want to go fast. And you might be able to see that Link's, the yellow triangle is getting ahead of the minimap. Oh, yeah, I do see that. When you are two small or three small squares ahead of the minimap, that's sort of a good tell that you're about to hit the speed cap. Um, there's also like a weird cyclic nature to this stream that's flying behind me. Mm -hmm. um, and you can use that too. Uh, but I don't really remember that very well. Um, this is the big place where I'm going to diverge from the world record. Yeah, I imagine routing in Hyrule Castle. It, it comes down to being just goaded. And also yeah, playing so, risk, like pretty risky. Look at these polygons, also. <laughs> oh, um, baby. Uh, so there's a yeah. So worth noting that everything I'm about to do is sort of like not the the baby Hyrule Castle, but it's like the one step up Hyrule Castle. So not Winnie Hut Junior, but Winnie Hut General. Yes, but the. The world record level Hyrule Castle is fucking insane. Um, and especially if you are doing, yes, the teething Hyrule Castle. <laughs> um, if you're doing Amiibo also, you route in using the Amiibo at a place where you don't lose very much time. Um, and I think the big Amiibo they use is the one that spawns a bunch of fish because there are fish that spawn that can raise attack in a potion. Uh, and that is also luck based. There's an Amiibo that spawns fish? Yeah. Yeah. Nintendo, what the fuck were they? What were they smoking? <laughs> Please um, buy this twenty dollar product so you can spawn fish in your game. <laughs> it's good for speed runs. <laughs> um, so I I'm gonna kind of not cover too much, other than there are a couple of things that everybody gets in Hyrule Castle, just in a different order. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a couple of general strats worth noting. The first thing worth noting is that Hyrule Castle struggles to load at the end of a bliss. You can cause the game to load more quickly by going... Well, I paused for a long time, so the game was loading in the background. Um, but uh, when you land, you quickly... You, like, cycle through a quick menu like this. Here, I'll show you once I load in. Gotcha. You equip and unequip a shield or change your runes back and forth. And for some reason, this causes the game to load uh, okay. because you are forcing it to load a new actor. And this like forces it to load things like chests and stuff more quickly that are currently despawned. Oh, so it's um, not even just the textures are gone, but like actual actors are not yeah, loaded the, the, in. Yeah. the chest is not there. Okay, gotcha. Because in order to run this big open world game to save on resources, this object is not here until you're right next to it. That makes sense. Okay, bomb arrows are the absolute bar none best thing in the game. They're just good. There is nothing stronger God. than a good bow with bomb arrows. Nice. Y you can fire them quickly. They do crazy damage. They do splash damage. Um, they're really good. So we're going to try to accrue a bunch of bomb arrows, basically. Because the vast majority of the fights will be done with bow, though there are a few weapons we'll be picking up. Uh, again, I am doing a route here that you would never see. This is sort of the ADEF botched route. Um, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Hey, you're finishing the game, you know? That's right, baby. So we wind bomb over here. Uh, this is a really annoying place. I don't know if the, the... I don't think the world record has to do this anymore, but this is the fun RNG we had to deal with for like a thousand years. Uh, this left box gives arrows. It has a chance to give amazing arrows. It also has a chance to give like one arrow. Mm. Um, as opposed to, you know, five bomb arrows, five ice arrows, because elemental arrows are also strong. So we break this and pray. Uh, it's fine. Five fires and one shock is like not that bad, but this is the real money maker. You will not have to cover this in your video, but I just want you to know that I need a banana from this and you can lose world record pace runs. Oh, two bananas, two. 
Um, okay. I got two bananas. Um, but I need this other food so that I can win bomb. Um, okay. Two. And now I'm gonna win bomb from here. Yeah, I'm I'm starting to realize that the, the scope of this video might have to be a little bit more narrow than shit. The entirety of the speed run. Potentially. But I think just cover the big tricks. Yeah, I think that's that's probably what I'll end up doing is covering the big tricks. Um The bosses and the big tricks are what I would say. I also want to, without getting too much into speculation, but try and um be like, this is how the Breath of the Wild handled this interaction. Sure. So looking forward, because obviously I'm trying to clickbait the hell out of fucking Tears of the Kingdom. Right. No, of course. So I'm I'm gonna try and talk about Tears of the Kingdom, even with the zero knowledge that we have about it. But like this, it's also an open world game, so this is you know right. the loading thing is gonna be important to talk about. Like, hey, things aren't loading Probably. properly, so it's Probably. very likely that they're going to do something similar. So this is important. Yeah. So stuff like that. Um. We don't know about weapon durability or any of that other shit, so I'm not going to speculate on that. But um, I think weapon durability will return. I think it's cool, personally. Oh, you're one of those? Spicy. Hold up. Oh, I'm going to Twitter. Uh-oh. I'm canceling <laughs> you over your gamer at opinions. Least, at least for the speed run, it's fucking awesome. Because the weapon routing in Hyrule Castle, because we are going from a wooden spear to we have this many weapon slots we're yeah. about to jack up on like the strongest shit we can find bro jack me up yes baby let's go <laughs> the boss fights are weapon durability perfect i think in I, the i think another thing that works about uh weapon durability is like there's no this isn't fucking dark souls there's no stat requirements there's no like you just pick right. up fucking master sword and then you just use that for the rest of the game and it completely negates the you know meaning yeah. behind uh like acquiring weapons sure because you just will um, always use whatever the best thing is forever right until it breaks right and so a lot of the weapons in hyrule castle are the strongest weapons in the game but they often have really low durability mm. uh and so the literally every individual hit on each boss in the boss rush because we're not doing any of the dungeons we have to fight every boss at the end of any percent yeah okay um and every individual hit is routed the any percent world record is so finely routed on the fights that if you don't get any extra arrows it is arrow perfect oh wow and there are three ancient arrows that you get in the any percent world record route and you need all three of them um for calamity ganon and ancient uh, arrows obviously do extra damage to those yes, types of enemies yes. yeah they are literally the best. They also stun lock them for a moment. Mm, nice. um, but I'm doing dining room. This is what we used to do. It's what I still do. Um, but the world record route uh, goes near Zelda's bedroom. A yo. Um, and in that area, they get some strong bows and arrows. And then they clip out of bounds, fly around out of bounds a little bit to skip sections and then go straight to the bosses. And they get the bare minimum. Wow. I get intentionally a little too much stuff. <laughs> I mean, there's um, just so many goodies. Why You can't pass them up. That's right. For instance, this bow is sauced. 38 damage. We'd love to see it. And then you can get this banana if you only get one banana, but I had two, but I'm getting it anyway, because why not? I'm going to get this food just as a fun backup because we're doing an explainer video. Yeah, and you might you know take damage or whatever. I am not whistling because I don't want to alert the other moblins in the room. I need this. So I pull it towards me. So this Royal Guard spear, all, all the Royal Guards weaponry that is black uh, breaks in like 10 hits, but is the strongest weapons in the game. Oh, OK. Uh, we're now going to come over here. Switch to our circle bomb. Actually, square bomb is fine. And we are going to place this bomb at a very specific point so that we can run just outside its blast radius. But we want to blow up this door and this door in okay. one bomb. Okay. So I do it right here because I want this sword. Again, Royal Guards. And now what I'm going to do is, and I'm actually going to save here. I'm going to equip this and save. Um, there is a Lizalfos that is asleep in the room to my left. I want him to wake up. I've never heard it pronounced out loud. 
and Liz Alfos. Liz Alfos. I was like, what he's talking about lasagna? Because <laughs> you know how your brain just fills in words when yeah. you're, you know, and I'm just like, what? Liz- oh, that's a enemy type. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Uh, so I need to walk inside of his room to wake him up because I need him later. You need the Lazalfos? I need to kill him later. Oh. Uh, there is a moblin in this room down here. I want to alert him, but I don't want him to see me. So I'm going to whistle for a moment so that mm. he gets alerted and walks towards me. What was that noise? Hit him with the metal because gear solid, knock on the wall. I want to stealth strike him because stealth strikes do like critical damage and that kills him in one and I need this weapon. This Royal Claymore is the goaded weapon in the game. High durability, 52 attack. Uh, And it's a two-hander, which matters for a stun lock I'm gonna show you later. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, Also for me, because I'm a baby, he drops Moblin Guts, which when put into my potion makes it last longer. Um, But World Record does not do this. Mm. Uh, I'm going to get this bow. The Royal Guard's bow, strongest bow in the game, but again, low durability. And just for safety, I'm going to get this shield. But that is not necessary. The world record just uses the pot lid. That's crazy. And then I'm going to break every one of these boxes as quickly as I can because they can drop good arrows. I have gotten not great arrow luck so far, which is not great. I'll get some backup bomb arrows just for fun. Um, And then I'm going to... Pull this back out, climb up here. One, two, three, four. Again, I am Z-targeting to walk more quickly. And now I'm going to show you how dumb Liza- how dumb every enemy in the game is. Check this out. Mm-hmm. Throw this square bomb between those do- uh, the barrels or whatever. The Lizalfos comes out here. He's like, what is that, bro? And he cannot help himself. And I can just sneak strike him. Bro. You need this boomerang. Uh, the world record gets it from a different Black Lizalfos, but you need a Lizal Tri Boomerang okay. for the Thunderblight fight, and I get this shield as backup, pick up my bomb to get rid of it, and I'm on my way. Okay, I am now going to take out my Royal Claymore, and I'm going to save because the kitchen is kind of annoying, or pardon me, the dining room or whatever. Gotcha. Um, I can run to here and jump and now crouch. I don't need this Razor Shroom because I have enough bananas, but I'll get it anyway, and this for safety, I guess. Uh, This is another example of enemies being dumb. Um, My goal is to sneak strike the guy on the left because I want that crusher. Uh, I want his weapon. I don't care about the guy on the right at all. Gotcha. But I also want to cook, which means I need to light this on fire so that it becomes an active cooking pot. But if you are aggroed into combat, you can't cook. So I want him to never notice me, the guy on the right. So I'm going to come right here. Indeed. Aim right here. Cook. Yes, yes, yeah. Throw this. Do that. Come here. Light my arrow. Pick my arrow back up. I'm going to need it. And we're going to do this as the ingredients. You have a small chance to get a crit food here, which I did not. Crit food doubles the length, Um, Mm. but I'm at the point where 6 minutes 30 is plenty. Yeah, okay. Um, That's plenty of time. Uh, I get this, and now I'm going to go ahead and drop the shit I don't need. These are my weapons that I will be using. Um, I'm also going to equip this and drop that. Actually, equip this. And you know what? I'll equip this just for fun. And these are my equips for the rest of the run. I'm going to blow up that square bomb. And we are going to wind bomb from here. I'm going to go ahead and eat some food. Uh, Let's just do that. That's fine. Okay. Please be nice to me. My arrow count is shockingly low. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that is not enough. Uh, So I'm going to have to get some backups. I'm not shocked I missed this one. This wind bomb is hard and I'm out of practice. It is absolutely insane to me that the developers, when they were designing the game or whatever, they're just like, yeah, just let them go to the end of the game. Like, good luck. And then obviously that's just like speedrunners are like, oh, it's sick. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's awesome. I remember seeing an interview with Miyamoto where he talked about it, or maybe it was Eiji Onuma, but one of them was like, yeah, you can go to the end of the game if you want. 
and all of us just being like, what? what? Yeah, because like For real. Because what the game before this uh, was, uh, which is Zelda game, the the Skyward uh, Sword, Skyward Sword, which had like insane, insanely long like unskippable cutscenes, like backtracking, forced to beat the game. Um, I think it it got blown open later, uh, but at the time, like there was not really huge skips in the speed run. And then what the game before that was Twilight Princess, Twilight Princess, which also like had some major skips, but the any percent run was still like a couple hours. Mm-hmm. Does that? And did then, you just drown? Yeah, I was Pretty about much. to. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you run out of stamina, you drown and go to your last standing spot, which would have been back at my save anyway. Um, <clears throat> and it eats one heart. Um. What was I going to say? Uh, yeah, the I mean, the any percent world record for this was under an hour within a week. Yeah, which is, you know, crazy to think about. I wonder there if they're going to attempt something similar with the, the next game where it, it has an open structure like that. They probably will do something similar. Wait, do I want... I think there was one more bomb arrow chest I wanted to grab. This might be enough. I'm so out of practice that I feel like I'm just going to die. But, you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. This, If I were goaded and at the, my prime playing like as good as I used to be able to, this would be plenty of arrows. But mm -hmm. I just feel like it's not going to be enough. Um, but that's okay. Uh, we'll figure it out. Okay. The bosses. This is the hardest part of any percent to get good at, but it feels so good um, when you are really good. Uh, it just feels great. I want full health because... Oh, I could have just eaten my thing. Whatever. I want full health because uh, of that one hit protection I talked about. Yeah. And I want my Royal Guards bow with normal arrows equipped. And I want... Let's go ahead and use the stone smasher, but I'm going to want this to be my first weapon. Okay. The boss fights. There are four blights and calamity, and you must fight them all in a row. And if you die, you have to do them all again. Luckily, there is a skip to immediately in like one frame kill the first one. Oh, wow. Um, it's called wind blight skip because you fight them in the order wind blight, water blight, fire blight, thunder blight, which is also coincidentally pretty much just a difficulty order. <laughs> they get harder as they go. Um... Wind Blight is uh, just kind of slow to fight, like they all are. So the fact that we can kill him right away is really cool. Uh, I'll show you how the quick kill works, if I can remember my visual cues, um, which I often can't. So I think this is the setup I used to use. The current setup, they literally just stand on a spot and are like, hope this works. Um, but basically what is going to happen is I'm going to aim an arrow at a certain spot, and my goal is to walk into the cutscene right as the arrow gets to the point where he's going to spawn, and it, classic speedrun, does damage to him as he's spawning before his health can fill up. Mm. Um, but I am going to eat my attack up potion as I walk into the cutscene so that it does extra damage. So this is the strongest single bow in the game, and we're about to shoot an arrow right into his face. So I'm going to hold forward and walk in. You can skip this first cutscene, but the second cutscene must be played in its entirety for the trick to work. So is it like doing damage during the cutscene, pretty much? Yep. Uh, you can tell if you got it if his head shakes like three times after this. I did not get it, but it will do damage. So I'll show you here. It might put him in second phase. Mm. Okay, it just did a little bit of damage, so it was wrong. Uh, if you miss this, you lose like 30 seconds. Um, Rough. But, you know, at a top level and even not at a top level, like just practice it a little bit and you should really never miss it. Because mm -hmm. um, it's a pretty consistent visual cue. Uh, and if you I fail mean, it and you don't have enough resources to finish off the rest of the fights, it's best to just reset and try again, right? Correct. Yeah. If you're doing yeah. a no reset, just reload your save. Yeah. You don't have enough stuff to beat all the blights. It's just not possible. Yeah, so this skip is 100% necessary. Yep. Everyone should learn it. It's made more difficult by gyro, because you're aiming for a specific spot. If you are just starting out, you could, in theory, turn off your gyro controls just for this. That's perfectly fine. But we obviously don't. Just don't. Okay, he's going insano hands. style, which means I probably got it. Um, he starts to, like, freak the fuck out. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> he is pissed 
Yeah, he he's does shaking not like his that. head. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, okay, so I'm just gonna do these fights now. I'm gonna try to commentate as I do it, but again, yeah. it's pretty specifically routed. Okay. Gotcha. Two hits just outside splash range. He goes for this attack. We switch over to the crusher. We want to get as many double hits as possible down to the bottom of the stamina wheel and knock him down. Into second phase. Again, I'm doing this much damage, A, because my weapons are really good, B, because I have that triple up attack potion mm. uh, active, which is the most bonuses you can get is three. They don't stack like with other bonuses. Correct. Gotcha. Uh, I don't think it stacks with attack up armor. Uh, this is the worst place for him to go above the throne. So now I need to headshot him to knock him down. I it didn't knock him down? Question mark. And him landing up there is the absolute worst case scenario, which is why you hate the throne spawn. Uh, that sucks, which is bad for my already low arrow count, but whatever. Um, so you have to get good at headshotting these guys. This one is right there. And uh, you get extra damage on a weapon when it, uh, throw if you throw it and it breaks on them. Oh, okay. Um, so when your weapon is one hit away from breaking, you want to throw it. And you have all that routed in pretty much, like when it's going to break. For yeah, the part, yeah, my routing isn't as specific, but the world record, yes, absolutely. Gotcha. I have the wrong weapon equipped, which is actually bad because I need to do this right away. Might be okay. Okay. So he has to be knocked down twice to knock him down, which did not happen, which means I'm just going to try to do some extra damage. And he goes into this attack, which I hate. We're going to go for these headshots. Okay. Uh, second phase of Fireblade, he always does the same thing. Uh, he goes into his, like, absorbing attack, which you cannot hit him during. Mm -hmm. um, so you just get out the weapons you need for when you knock him down, place a bomb in the middle of the room so it gets sucked up. Uh, and I want probably that, and I want this. She went really far away. I didn't throw. Cool. Um, if you are really low on arrows, you can stun him with bombs. Use shock arrows, I guess. This should kill him. Okay, Thunderblight, the absolute worst one. Uh, yeah, this, no, this guy sucks ass. Yeah, you have to kill him quickly or you are capital F fucked. Wait, oh fuck. <laughs> capital F fuck or. Uh, I like my muscle memory went to all dungeons, uh, where you fight him inside the divine beast, but, uh, you're supposed to run up to him with the Royal Claymore and strike him immediately. Uh, so I now have to improv. Oh, okay. This will be fine. Facing. Okay. This is important. Um, you will see player five and his any percent world record face away from enemies before doing these charge spin attacks. Uh -huh. The reason is for some reason when you're facing away from them and your back is to them, sometimes when it hits them, you get a double hit. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, and that is obviously really, really good. As it turns out, double hit good because it hit more than one. Oh, fuck, I was too late. All right, well, this is really slow, and probably my attack up potion will now run out. But, like, ultimately, it's for explainer purposes, so it's fine. I would have reset, obviously. Gotcha. Um, okay. Second phase is really fucking cool. If you fuck it up, it's bad. Um, but uh, second phase is cool. This is why we needed a boomerang. 
Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a regular arrow. I'm going to make sure I have this, and I'm going to pull a Magnesis just in case. I aim at his shield, walk away from the pillars, strike the shield, shoot him, pick up the boomerang, break the shield. One, okay, that sucks. Strike him down again. Let's go in here. I didn't turn around for some reason. Okay, that's all the blights. Decent improv, both phases went bad. Okay, Calamity, this fight is a waking nightmare. Um, and this is pretty much like the last major challenge, right? Yeah. The final, final boss is an auto-scroller. Gotcha. Okay, good, I missed the... Okay, so three things have to happen. One, you need to get every flurry rush you can, which is that thing where you dodge an attack right as it's happening. Gotcha. So you need to learn his entire moveset. Um, two... You should, if you are on world record pace, you should shield parry every laser. Um, because shield parrying his laser attack back to him, which is kind of hard, uh, does a lot of damage to him, and it's very fast, and you can't attack him really much during that attack anyway. So it's just your um, way of doing damage when he's doing that attack. Exactly. Three, the first phase, you are just shooting arrows at this motherfucker's head um, whenever you're not flurry rushing. So I'm going to equip my bomb arrows, have my good bow, and I'm just going to go for headshots targeting him for some reason the game is really generous and the arrows will often hone to his head when you're targeting him um so that's nice you can just tell me you downloaded an aimbot it's okay i won't <laughs> like you know, the game magically just locks onto it i don't know i don't know why it's doing that <laughs> the final really dumb thing is if he ever goes to the wall it just sucks <laughs> Uh, if he goes to the wall, you have to hit him with two powerful arrows vis-a-vis -vis two elemental or two bomb arrows to knock him down mm -hmm. um, or parry one of his attacks. In second phase, if he goes to the wall, you just lose world record. Nice. Because um, you lose like 10 to 20 seconds, depending on the attacks. Um, I'm going to run away from him and get some stuff off the wall because I'm a little low on resources and this arena has nice stuff like arrows and stuff like that. Oh, um, so I'm going to get this sword. I'm going to not parry this laser because I'm too late. Sometimes the laser splash damages off the wall and you get big time borked. Mm. I'll go for a parry. Got it. So now my bow is gone, so I go into my next bow. So like the headshots are tracking, but like I also need to do a little bit of work. Like I need to aim near where the head is going to be. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Got the next parry. I usually don't go for this many, but I'm trying to show off. Even though I'm the most out of practice I ever am. Not okay, dude, you aim goody, where he's going to be on the wall. Aim again where he's going to be. Okay. It takes three for some reason. That's the attack that's easiest to parry. I'm not getting like any headshots, which means I need this. And he's back on the wall. This guy <sighs> this loves is the, the wall. This fucking attack sucks so bad because the point of it is it eats projectiles. And he jumped down on me and killed me. Uh, yeah, that's the worst possible attack, literally, in his whole arsenal, is the tornadoes. Uh, they're wow. unparryable, they delete projectiles, and they take up the whole room. And they do damage. Um, okay, so what would have happened... I'm not going to replay the Blights. That's fine. Um, you have to replay have everything up to that point? Correct. Yikes. If you If you kill Calamity, though, you if you die on the final, final boss, you just go back to the auto-scroller, basically. Okay. Um, so the first phase, you're supposed to have finished it like 45 seconds faster than that. Um, and if I were playing well, it would have happened. But you get him down to half health, he transitions to second phase. In second phase, he has invincible armor. And the invincible armor can be removed by knocking him down by a parrying a laser mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. by flurry rush. You can, like, strike him during flurry rush. So the way second phase works is you pray to the Lord on high that he opens with a laser. 
because if he opens laser, you can strike him down and then you're good to go because there is a genuinely free stun lock on second phase. Okay. Uh, but he has to be vulnerable, which means you need to parry a laser to get him into that state. Yeah. Uh, I'll the definitely way the be, stun lock works. Uh, I was gonna say I was definitely gonna I'm definitely gonna check out the uh, world record run for sure to uh, see how they they do the the combat and stuff. Yeah. So that, it's gonna be interesting to to see like what it looks like when it's all mapped out perfectly, practiced and optimized. Oh, it and stuff is like incredible. That. Yeah, it's I'm incredible for that. Um, the world record for any percent is one of the best current standing Zelda world records. It's incredible. Um, so in second phase, you knock him down, and then if you are holding a two-handed weapon, when I spin here, I can actually show you this. Um, when I spin around with a two-handed weapon while I'm swinging it, when I release the swing, it makes a big splash damage circle on the ground. Yeah, a little shockwave, whatever. Uh, so you'll see it here, like one, two, three, boom, that big shockwave. Okay, you'll notice if I only spin around a little bit, the shockwave is smaller. But if mm -hmm. I spin around, the more times you spin, the bigger the shockwave becomes. Okay. You get on Calamity's back right side behind, like, by his legs. And while he's getting up, you spin attack his legs and his torso. Uh, or, like, his, like, thorax. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and uh, your goal is to hit him at least three times. So you get, like, at least a couple spins. And then there is a visual cue when his spear strikes down on the ground to show that he's about to fully get up. You release and the shockwave hits him during his transition and he falls back down. And you just rinse repeat that with your strongest two handed weapon until he dies. And then that finishes uh, off phase two and it's and that's the end of the fight. Yep. Now, the world record speed run does something risky where before going for the spins, they go for an extra slash to do even more damage as fast as possible. It's really risky and the stamina management is really hard because your stamina doesn't regenerate when you're slashing. Um, but it is a thing of beauty to watch a really, really well executed Calamity stun lock. Um, and then after that, uh, Beast Ganon, there is literally nothing to explain. It is a genuine auto scroller. You are just waiting for, uh, you Hello. move around Beast Ganon in a certain way so that he never like turns or walks. Um, so you're kind of just manipulating his AI to stay in one place and then you just wait for the golden circles to appear and you blow them up mm. And that's it. That is breath of the wild any percent This game's wacky and wild and crazy and now I want to learn it and I'm blaming you for this <laughs> You should learn it. This game is awesome um, It's a great a really beginner friendly uh, uh, Guide you can watch is limb cubes guide from like 2018 it will be a little outdated because it'll do BTBs instead of BLSS to get around the plateau. Yeah. But you can just skip that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of great resources. The Breath of the Wild speedrunning Discord is unbelievably good. Yeah. Um, hey, I missed all that. <laughs> you repeat it real fast. Yeah, no problem, Jeff. Thanks for the tier one for 11 months, dude. Um, welcome back. Uh, yeah, so... The Breath of the Wild speedrunning Discord is super welcoming and everybody is super awesome and there's some crazy knowledgeable people. Um, so that's really great. And yeah, if you ever have any other questions, you can obviously DM me and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Yeah, I mean, just like links to whatever, like videos and resources is definitely going to be huge. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to also like play the game more, especially with uh, Tears of the Kingdom coming out because I imagine like you, when the game comes out, you're going to know life that shit if you can. Oh, correct. <laughs> yeah, and I, I want to like warm up to the game and like be able to play it as well. Cause not to, I, I feel like I, I've always been the kind of guy who's like, no, nah, I'm not gonna hop on the new game. But like, bro, it's fucking it's new Zelda. It's Zelda. It's Zelda after this, six years. Yeah, after six years. It's gonna be good. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for uh, sitting down and taking your time to show me all this stuff. It was super fun, super dope. Of course. Um, I just sent you, I remembered who it was. It's Vivo. Gotcha. Uh, Vivo or Vivox. Um, this is his basics and intro to Wind Bomb and mm. advanced Wind Bombing guide. Oh, heck yeah. Um, and uh, it is unbelievable how much nuance there is to this trick. I I'm excited. I'm excited to get real nerdy with it and see what I can make. Um, that's hopefully not like a terrible bastardized. Uh, Something that's, you know, not too nitty gritty, but also explains things uh, comprehensively as well as no, I think you'll has do some, great. some interest for, for everybody. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Hell uh, yeah, dude. Well, I'm excited to see it. Yeah. 
Uh, we'll we'll see. I, I'm I'm learning that editing videos turns out takes a lot of time. So it I, does. <laughs> I have been doing like nothing but streaming, editing videos, and sleeping for like the last two weeks. Oh damn! But it's it's fun. I, I don't I don't hate it. It's it's the most rewarding I feel like I've done with this whole YouTube thing in a long time. So I, I'm I'm excited Fuck to yeah. also branch out to other games and stuff. So we'll see how it goes. Nice, yeah. dude. Are you gonna keep streaming? Oh no, dude. I'm I'm starving. Yeah, I'm really hungry too. <laughs> <laughs> you ending as well? Yeah. Alrighty, dude.